So this is the second topic in the HL component, looking at synthetic roots. By the end of this unit, you should be able to uh, know that the synthesis of an organic compound stems from really available starting materials very, very a uh, series of discrete small steps. And the functional group interconversions, which we've been looking at, so functional group chemistry, is the basis of such synthetic roots. And we'll also know about the wonderful retrosynthetic uh, aspects of organic chemistry. And therefore, because you know these things, you'll be able to deduce a multi-step synthetic route given starting reagents and products. So what is retrosynthesis? What are synthetic roots? So uh, knowledge of the types of reactions undergone by functional groups and the mechanisms, which is what we've been looking at for the last um, week or so, or two weeks or so, allows chemists to determine the possible steps for synthetic pathways, okay, in both the forward and backward reaction. Okay, so in retrosynthesis, what happens is that you have a target molecule that you want, okay, so then you work back and say, well, how do I get the functional groups from that target molecule by a step-by-step -step process with different precursors until you end up with the starting materials which you're going to use to make the target molecule. This is pretty much what my PhD was. Okay, so essentially the steps that you do are as follows. Okay, so step one is that you draw the structural formula of both the starting compound. Okay, so you want the structural formula of both the starting compound or starting materials, okay, these the guys here, and also uh, the desired products, okay, and the desired products, the target molecule, essentially. So you draw, you draw those out. The second step is that you list the possible reactions that can get you from the starting, well, from the um, target molecule, functional groups, okay, so they're going to have certain functional groups, to how, what kind of reactions working backwards would you require in the starting material. So it's going to be listing the reactions that change the functional groups in the um, desired product, okay, from the starting compounds. Okay. And then we have three, okay, identify the functional groups uh, present in the starting material. Okay. So you've got to look at the functional, well, let's put the FGs, okay, because you can hear what I'm saying. Okay, so we'll just call them the FGs, the, the functional groups, in the starting material, okay, you look at that and how you're going to end up through the intermediate precursors to move to your target molecule. And finally, step four is design a reaction pathway. Okay, so design a pathway. Okay, how are you gonna get from a starting material to precursor two? Oh, well, actually, it's the other way around in a sense. Okay, so how do you get from the target molecule to precursor one? Okay, what changes in the functional group? And then what functional groups do you need in precursor two to get to precursor one? And finally, what starting materials are you going to need to get to precursor two? Okay, then that's known as retrosynthesis. Okay, so that's retrosynthesis is going from the target molecule to the uh, starting material. Okay, so these are all the reactions that you have been given, okay, from converting alkenes to alcohols and aldehydes and carboxylic acids, esters and dihalogen alkanes and polymers and ketones, halogen alkanes and alkanes, and also benzene into nitrobenzene and finally into phenylamine. Okay, so these are the reactions that you will use in your retrosynthesis. Okay, so all those kind of compounds which have those functionalities, you could be asked to create and work out the staying materials. So to illustrate a point of how that would work, how would you produce ethanol from ethane? So what I want you to do is design a, a retrosynthesis. Um, so you're going to start off with your target molecule, ethanol. And how do you get from ethanol, or how do you get to ethanol 
from ethane working backwards. Okay, so essentially ethanol is what you start off with and how you're going to work backwards to get to ethane. So pause the video now and see if you can work out a retrosynthesis for that particular compound. All right, so this is what you could have come up with. Okay, so you start off with an alcohol. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go from alcohol to halogen alkane. Okay, in order to do that, in terms of a retrosynthesis, is converting an alcohol into a halogen alkane. And then a retrosynthesis would then be, once you have the halogen alkane, how would you get to the alkane? Okay. And then you work forwards uh, to go from the alkane to the alcohol. So it's basically those steps. Okay. So a retrosynthesis is working back from the alcohol to the intermediate to the starting material. And then the starting material working forward in terms of what functional groups you require to get to the end product. Okay, and that's retrosynthesis and synthetic roots.